Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Extension tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you the useful built-in Node.js modules that you can access without having to include external things. All you have to do is make sure you have Node.js set up and we have access to a whole bunch of useful things like accessing the file system, setting up local servers, checking OS or computer information, and much more. If you haven't already seen my video on how to include Node.js in your extension easily, make sure you hit the I button right here and you can get set up to run everything as you're going to learn today. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can download the extension testing code, which we're just going to be using as a bare bones extension to then code the, uh, the Node.js built-in modules with and also follow us there on GitHub for updates on code and down in the description, follow us on Instagram as well. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you want to help support the channel financially and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. And with that, you can get cool perks like Discord status to display what kind of member you are, live streams where you can hang out, learn and ask questions, and much more. So for reference, if you want to check these out, there are a couple more that I didn't include in today's video, but I did pick the most useful ones, I think and you can check out all of the built-in modules at uh, W3Schools Node.js built-in modules. And we're gonna be just going over each of these useful ones. How do we include it and how do we display the information within it? You can obviously check out the guide um, on each of these to see all of the properties and methods available, but we're gonna be doing it programmatically. So I'm using my extension testing extension here, which if I run it is just a blank window. All we're gonna be doing is inside of some JavaScript or a script, we're going to include each of these modules one at a time and then get their properties. Firstly, we're going to start off with crypto. The way we include any of these is gonna be the same. So first we need to make a const because we're using a higher version of ECMAScript and we're going to just set like this module as our variable. And for any of these to include these built-in modules, we simply say require and the argument we're gonna take is going to be whatever the name is here. In this case, we can say require crypto. And if I go ahead and say alert this module, save it and run my extension, you can see we're going to get an object which represents our crypto, in this case, Node.js module. Now the way we're gonna get all the information inside this object, which is also all these properties and methods, is by simply saying for variable i in this module, this is how you loop through any object in JavaScript, we're going to first alert i, and if you want, you can alert this module i, which will give you the property each time through of all the properties and methods, and then basically the value of that property or code. So now if I save this and run it, we're going to actually get quite a few alert messages here, depending on which library you use. So you can see first we get create cipher four, which then gives us this module i. It will give us the actual value of it, which in this case is the code itself or the function. And then we can just keep going through here and see what each of these are. You can create a hash, which returns a new hash using an algorithm and some options. And this is just a way you can quickly go through and check out all of the properties and methods for this given module. And as you can see, holding down enter is sometimes the best way to get through that. So crypto is basically anything involving hashes, setting up private keys and that sort of thing, which is very useful if you're doing some kind of privacy driven things in your extension. Next up we have events. So all we have to do is replace the text inside of these single quotes here to include the different uh, library or module. If I go ahead and reopen after saving, we're going to get once and these are just events which appear to be ways to dispatch event listeners and event uh, dispatch type of things which essentially allow you to create custom events instead of just the typical on clicks mouse overs you can define custom events like maybe you want an event called is preview window open or something and you can dispatch this and listen for it uh, customizing that yourself next up we have FS which stands for file system this is very useful if you don't want to go into JavaScript extended or the script itself to access files you can do all sorts of useful things here like appending files, access different files, chmod if you're familiar with that. You can copy files, you can create and read files, check if they exist, and a whole host of other useful file functions which take a while to get through. Next up we have HTTP and HTTPS which are useful for setting up 
basically socket connections or setting up local servers. So you can see you have lots of these different types of methods like get, post, connect, and all of that. You have a whole list of status codes you can get and basically the ability to create servers, get from servers, request, check the header sizes, and a whole host of other useful things. Again, if you ever want more information on any of these, you can just check out the built-in modules page, which has an entire list of everything, but I'm just showing you how you can get it programmatically and how to include them. Next up is the net module, which is another thing to access basically connections. You can create a server, and I'm not sure if this is much different than the HTTP. You might want to do a little bit more research on that, but this might be more for connecting things rather than creating the servers themselves. Next up, we have OS, which gives us access to all of the operating system architecture and all that. You can see we have an x64 architecture. You can even check the CPUs and get a whole bunch of built-in things of your system. And this is actually useful for getting things like the username and the platform of your computer as well. And you can get really detailed as to what kind of uh, memory and stuff you can access to. Next, we have the path module. If we go ahead and run it, we have basically it looks like a module which is good at modifying paths of files or directories and it gives us a lot of methods as well to parse them out into different formats. Next up is the timers module which allows us to do things like as you can see set timeouts, clear timeouts and it also includes the set interval method which is something useful for running code continuously every x amount of second. Then we have a util module which I believe should just contain some useful uh, sort of niche almost utilities, but that could also come in handy. We have debug log, formatting, and again, if you want all the information on any of these, you can simply go uh, into the guide itself and check out the description for each of these. Lastly, we have ZLib, which is actually pretty useful and unique. It's something that we can use to basically zip up files or unzip, and this is very useful if you have information you need to download or unzip, uh, which is a common format things will be in on the web or on a local server, because sometimes having a folder structure is not the exact same as, or as easy as just zipping everything up and uploading that file to a server. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Those are some of the most useful built-in Node.js modules you can use in your Adobe extension. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And again, down in the description, you can check out the extension testing code and uh, start integrating this yourself and messing around with it in the GitHub link. Follow us there as I upload code way earlier on GitHub than the videos themselves. If you haven't joined our Discord server yet, make sure you do and join in our scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and many other instructive channels. And if you want to help support us on YouTube and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. IP, link in the description. I do want to give a last shout out again to Aaron D from our forum. He's not a member, but he was very instrumental in helping uh, me figure out Node.js and that has allowed me to expand upon and keep creating more Node.js videos for you guys. And also a shout out to all of our members and VIPs who are here all the time contributing. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.